Hi guys, Mike here from Com3 Interactive. Welcome back to the channel. It's been a while, hasn't it? Now, the reason I've not been uploading, I've just had a few things going on in my personal life, nothing too serious, so don't worry about that. But it's just eaten up a lot of my time and I've not had the time to actually record. Hopefully I'm going to get back into it. It may not be as regular as it previously was, so maybe it's not going to be a video every week, maybe every two weeks, I'm not sure. I'm hoping that you guys understand this and you're going to stick around because there's still going to be some good stuff coming. It's probably just not going to be every week. But we're going to jump back in with something that a lot of people have been requesting, and that is the next episode of the FPS series, and we're going to be adding footsteps. <laughs> And not only are we going to be adding footsteps, we're going to be adding different sounds for different materials. So if we just jump on over, we'll take a look. So here we are back in the scene. And if I play now, we're going to see we're exactly where we left off. Apart from we've got these three coloured squares. Now, each of these squares are going to represent a different terrain type. So we've got green for grass, silvery grey for metal and brown for wood. And as you'll see, when I walk over them, we get a grass sound effect, a metal, and also a wood. And we're also going to take into consideration the speed differential between sprinting and crouching as well. So if I just go over this metal one, why it's one of the louder ones, if I sprint, we can see that the footsteps speed up. If I crouch, we'll see that they slow down. And this really isn't going to take that long at all. So just before we get into doing that, I'm going to delete what I have in the project and we're going to start it from scratch. And it wouldn't be a Comp3 video if I didn't introduce Gigatank3000 as the sponsor. Go check his links out. They're down in the description. Go check him out on Twitter. Go check out his website. Keep up to date with what the guy is up to. I have a little bit of insider information that he's working on a VR project now as well. So keep your eye out for that. So we've got our script open. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make this feature toggle by adding in a private bool use footsteps. So we can toggle this on and off when we want. Next, we're going to scroll down and probably below the zoom parameters, we're going to add in a couple of variables. So we're going to add in our header first, and these are going to be our footstep parameters. So the first thing we're going to need, we're going to need a float. So that's serialized field, private float, base, step, speed. And we're going to set that equal to 0.5. You can mess about with this in your own project and find what's right for you. I've found that 0.5 is right for how I've got it at the moment. Next, we're going to want our multipliers for our sprinting and our crouching. So again, serialized field, private float, crouch, step, multiplier. And again, a little bit of testing told me that 1.5 is about right for me. And finally, private float, sprint step multiplier. And I'm going to set that to 0.6. Next, we're actually going to need an audio source. So we'll add that in. And this is just going to be our footsteps audio source. So we'll just call that footstep audio source. And we're going to set that to default so we don't get that warning in the console. Next, I'm going to set up all my audio clips. So I want multiple different versions of all the sound effects so I can just pick one at random so it doesn't sound really robotic and boring. So the way that I'm going to do that, I'm going to do serialized field, private audio clip array, and I'm going to have three of these, one for the wood, one for the grass, and one for the metal. Simple as that. Now you can add as many of these as you want. You can add different ones. You can add gravel, sand, etc., etc. I'm just going to use these three as an example. Next, we're going to add in a actual private variable, the ones that aren't going to appear in the inspector. One of these is going to be the timer, because obviously we need to keep track of how much time has passed in between each footstep so we can keep that rhythm. So let's create a private float footstep timer. We'll set that to zero by default. And then we're also going to need a private float again. This is going to be a property this time though. Now, if you followed some of the other videos in this series, you'll be familiar with these properties. Basically, it's just a way so I can get the actual footstep time based on the current movement state, i.e. walking, running, or crouching. So I'm just going to call this get current offset. Use our lambda. Then we're going to check if we're crouching. We're going to use the base step speed. And we're going to times this by our crouching multiplier or else with the colon are we sprinting if so we'll use the 
their step speed multiplied by our sprint multiplier or else we're just going to use the base speed now that should look familiar to you as we do have similar things already working like this in the project as you can see down here we're doing that same ternary operator for our movement speed okay so we've got all our variables so let's go into our update and we'll do what we have done with all the other feature toggles so if use footsteps is true we are going to handle footsteps now obviously we're going to need to create this method so let's scroll down let's do it down here private void handle footsteps maybe above final movements so there's two checks that we're going to do inside handle footsteps before we do anything to do with the audio those are we're going to do a ground check and we're going to do a movement check because if we're not grounded we don't want footsteps and if we're not actually moving we don't want footsteps so let's just check if not character controller dot is grounded we're just going to return out of the method we're going to check our current input is equal to vector 2.0 so we've got no movement on our wasd keys again we're going to return simple next we'll just iterate over our timer so we'll take a footstep timer and we'll minus equals time dot delta time from that and if that footstep timer has reached zero so if footstep timer is less than or equal to zero then we want to play a sound effect and we're going to do this with ray casting so we're going to ray cast down from our camera and we're going to interrogate what we've actually hit below us so we'll do that with another if statement if physics dot ray cast and we're going to take our player camera dot transform dot position we're going to cast this down so we're going to use vector three dot down we want to put this data out to a ray cast hit and we're going to call that hit and let's just give this a length of three units so we're going to shoot that ray down three units from our camera's transform pretty simple pretty self-explanatory next we're going to do a switch statement over our hit dot collider dot tag so we're going to check the tag of the object that this ray cast has hit so before we go any further with that let's go and set up our tags we'll leave that where it is and we'll jump back over into the unity editor all right so we're going to need three tags here we're going to need a grass tag a metal tag and a wood tag so let's start with the grass tag we click on our grass object we can see it's untagged and we can add a tag now we can do this two ways we can call this grass and leave it as it is but then the tag list actually gets quite big quite quickly so a little trick for you you can actually folder these tags so if i do footsteps slash grass and save that and then just while we're here let's do the other two as well so footsteps slash metal and again footsteps slash wood now if we select our objects and click our tag we see we have a folder now called footsteps so we can use grass select our metal footsteps metal and then tags footsteps wood nice and simple so we've got that set up we can switch over those now so we'll check if the case is footsteps slash wood we can play a wood sound in there case footsteps slash metal play a metal sound in there footsteps slash grass that's where we do our grass sound and then we'll just catch it with a default now if you took notice when i was actually showing the example at the start of the video when i was walking on this white base layer nothing was happening i had no sound effects at all now to get around that that'd be where you'd pick a default sound effect so if you were to walk over an object that didn't have a wood metal or grass tag you'd hit the default so if you hit the default we're just going to pick a random sound effect that we want and i'm going to default to grass so let's just run down this and we'll be able to copy and paste this next line of code into each of our cases so if the tag is wood we want to play a wood sound effect so we're going to do footstep audio source dot play one shot and the audio clip is going to be a wood clips and in this we're going to select a random dot range between zero and wood clips dot length minus one and that should be it so we can copy that now 
put it under a metal and change this to metal clips and metal clips dot length. The same for grass. And then we can just copy that grass one again for a default. And then finally, after we play the sound effect, this is where we want to reset our footstep timer. So we'll set footstep timer equal to get current offset, which is a property that we set up at the start of the video right up here. So this is going to tell us whether or not we need to wait half a second if we're just walking or we're going to multiply that by a crouch or sprint multiplier. So with that set up, we can jump over, select our first person controller and we can see we have our footstep parameters here. First things first, I'm just going to drag this audio source that I've already got on my first person controller into the footstep source. We can lock this in place and I've got a selection of footsteps here. Now I'll put a link in the description where I got these from. These are from a paid asset. It's not sponsored, but it is a really good asset. So I'll drop a link to that in the description. So let's start with the wood. We'll select all of our wood clips, drag them into wood clips, select all of our metal, drag it into metal, and select all of our grass, and throw them onto our grass array. Save that, and all being well, this should be working. You see, we have that grass sound effect now on this because this is our default layer. So if we walk over the grass, it's probably not going to make a difference. But then we'll walk over metal, back to grass, back to wood. And it's just as easy as that, guys. You can add as many different sounds as you want to that array. Just make sure you add a tag for it. Tag any specific sound effect objects that you want. Decide on your default and you're good to go. Everything's going to work from then on. If I was to add another game object and tag it metal, that would automatically make that metal sound effect when I walk over it. So I hope it's been useful, guys. I hope the guys that have been asking for this are actually happy with this method. There are different ways of doing this, obviously, as there is with everything, but this is a really good benchmark for you to start with. So I'm not going to say see you next week because I'm not sure when I'm going to see you, but I will see you again soon-ish. Thanks for watching guys, if you like the content remember to subscribe to the channel for weekly Unity tutorials.